Welcome to That's Canon, a podcast talking about the Canon film series and other similar movies. This is a episode 51, and I'm Phil. And I am a hollow husk of a human being. Even with all the bops in the soundtrack of this movie? Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Especially because of all the bops. They ruined those bops. I, I got to say, the movie this week, The Last American Virgin, has one of the best soundtracks that we've had on that's canon oh oh hands yeah. down yeah hands down i mean i guess it's you put it in that category where it's it's not it's not a score like it's not original orchestration you feel like you can't really compare it with those yeah, i mean G- alien contamination had a goblin soundtrack that's in a league of its own but oh, I mean, yeah. in terms of like movies that tried to have like a soundtrack of like popular music this knocked out of the park like we got the cars devo ario speedwagon um what else journey journey Quincy jones u2 uh, casey and the sunshine band at one yeah. point one horrific point <laughs> it was uh it was something and like the cast is a i wouldn't say a who's who of 80s stars but diane franklin who was in quite a few mm-hmm. quintessential 80s movies like bill and ted better off dead uh, the main actor Lawrence Monson was in Friday the Thirteenth yeah. Part Four, the final chapter. Yeah, he was um uh, Crispin Glover's buddy, right? Yeah, <laughs> the dead fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it also starred two people from Hot Chili: Joe Rubbo, who played the fat guy in Hot Chili. He played the fat guy in this too. Oh, poor Joe. And Big Louisa Apple. Mortis, who plays the horny Spanish lady. And hot chili. Oh my god, you're right. Yeah. Was she the German lady? She was, yeah. Oh my god, and she played the exact same character this one too. Exactly. Oh my god, that's so weird. And then so I not only so you mentioned those, I actually the first one I noticed, aside from uh the Friday the 13th guy, was at that first party, the girl, the quote unquote the ugly girl which is horrible. She was um, in that hilarious scene in Naked Gun where Frank Drebin, he like, he tries to get like a police chase going and he gets in the car and she's the girl like taking her driver's ed class. Yeah. <laughs> remember, the, remember the driving instructor telling her it, to like extend your middle finger? It, I mean, yeah, it's, <laughs> isn't it kind of weird? It's weird to see these people in this movie. And a lot of these people, this is their first movie uh they were actually cast because the director wanted virgin quote-unquote actors for this movie did he actually say that in an interview or something yeah so they were cast in the last american virgin a a comedy a dramedy of sorts yeah i can I can see this being I, obviously this is a remake of the movie Lemon Popsicle, which was made in Israel. Mm-hmm. And I can definitely see the the lost in translation of foreign comedy to American comedy. Yeah, especially we'll get into it, but especially towards the end, like where you say like there's like a drama aspect to it. And I think that's probably shows up in little you know bits and pieces throughout where it Things get a little dark at times, a little, little, little real. Um, a little almost, weird, too. A little weird. Yeah, very weird. It, to the point where I almost was questioning whether or not it was a comedy. Yes. Like a straight boner comedy, which I think this is probably how they marketed it, but that's not what we got. It it was kind of weird. It was, it was something that we can only start to talk about. The movie... <laughs> we have to oh uh, yeah we do <laughs> the movie doesn't have a great canon opening which goes to the point that if you don't get no. a great canon opening you don't get a great canon film you get crap yeah we don't i mean we get we no logo no nothing just kind of a canon pictures presents kind of text opening right yep oh. where we we get introduced to our hero quote-unquote hero gary <sighs> a teenage boy who delivers pizza uh, he's played by Lawrence Monson, and he's loading up for a pizza delivery. Uh, and it's kind of interesting. As soon as I saw the guy, I was like, okay, 
Friday the 13th. Looks I know familiar, this guy. But which one, right? I, I was like, which one? And then when I figured it out, I was like, damn, this guy always looks like he's on the verge of tears. Yeah, I guess he does kind of have that look about him. I think it's just like the shape of his eyes or something. And he's kind of like his, his resting, his resting sad face, I guess. Resting sad face. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's kind of, it's interesting because the intro, the intro credits and stuff like that, the guy is driving. It looks like Palacio, California, right? There's high rise buildings. Mm-hmm. There's palm trees, but the crux in the content of the movie, you don't, they don't really capitalize on that. No, it's, it's, do they even mention that they're in Southern California? I don't know. I don't think they really do. No, I mean, it's, it's, you're right. It's obvious that that's where they are, but they don't, it's not like a, ho- they're, they're in a Hollywood setting in any way. Exactly. Uh, and Gary, he goes to the local ice cream parlor. Maybe that's like super popular in the, the 80s. I don't really know. <laughs> the soda jerk. <laughs> but that's where we meet Diane Franklin's character named Karen. I got to say, I, I knew Diane Franklin from two roles primarily, Better Off Dead and Bill and Ted. And I, I, for the longest time, thought Diane Franklin was like European because she's European in both of those movies. Does so she have kind of, she's like an, like an accent she puts on? Yeah, because she's, uh, she's one of the princess babes in Bill and Ted. <laughs> and in Better Off Dead, she's a foreign exchange student. She's French. Uh, okay. So, um, so I guess not. I mean, where is she where is she actually from? She's probably from like Ohio or something. <laughs> probably. You know, I didn't even really uh Plains View, New York. Oh, okay. Cool. But yeah, I mean, she's she is like the one of the quintessential, you know, 80s it girls. When you think of 80s, I think of Diane Franklin. Even if yeah. I don't know what her name is, she just has that look, right? So um, yeah, speaking of her look, who do you think has cuz her eyebrows are on point? Yes. What do you th- what do you think are she has better eyebrows? Her or what's her name from uh Nightmare on Elm Street? Heather Langenkamp. Heather Langenkamp. Uh I would say Heather Langenkamp. Yeah, that's where I'm leaning to. I don't know why I'm fixating on the eyebrows, but like it must have been like the, the 80s style, but yeah. Good I did stuff. notice that. I did notice that because there's a lot of like close-ups of Diane Franklin's face. That must be what it is, just a lot of close-ups, yeah. Um but as- the eyebrows cast. I know. <laughs> like we're we're <laughs> obsessing a little bit about Diane Franklin here. Uh <laughs> so as soon as Gary and Karen meet, Gary has this magnetism to to Karen. He's kind of like ogling her. But he kind of always looks that way too, right? It's kind of like this longing look. <laughs> yeah. He's his. He, it's that like he's kind of got his jaw on the floor, his mouth hanging open like an idiot. Yeah, he does kind of do that a lot, but not just when he's looking at girls. Just kind of all the time. That's just his. I guess that's his other resting face. Right? He's got resting sad face and resting like face. <laughs> resting idiot face. Um, <laughs> it, yeah, it's super weird, and I don't know if you noticed. But when Diane Franklin exits the scene, she's in the background and she pushes her like moped thing uh, off of out of the scene. Right. Mm -hmm. Diane Franklin is deaf in her left ear. And because of that, she has no equilibrium. So she cannot ride a bike or a motorcycle. Interesting. Is so that we, kind of weird that they gave her a fucking prop that she literally couldn't use? I was. I thought. Wait. I thought you were gonna say it was like she, she tried to get on it and then immediately like fell <laughs> off of it off screen. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. Uh, you, you know, I'm deaf in this year. I just do it. Just get it done. Get on the damn bike. God damn it, Diane. <laughs> God damn it, Diane. That's the thirtieth take. <laughs> She's like fucking crying. She's got like a skinned knee. I was gonna say she's like a little like her arm is all banged up. We'll recast you. Sarah Jessica Parker's waiting in the wings. Uh-huh. <laughs> we'll fucking do it, Diane. Damn it. It's so it's weird. Um, <laughs> but yeah, as as uh, Gary watches Karen exit the scene, she he kind of makes a comment of how cute he is to his two buddies which is Joe Rebo, who plays the fat guy, David, and Steve 
Anton, who plays the heartthrob Rick. Rick. He yeah. is the handsome one of the group. Uh, interesting. Steve Anton, who plays Rick, was Jesse in Rick Springfield's music video, Jesse's Girl. Hmm. And that's and, kind of uh, that's kind of the, the the that character in the song is kind of this character. Yeah, a hundred percent. The the heartthrob who gets the girl, and then he's got a jealous friend who's kind of like looking on from the, the sidelines. Yep, he's also the bully in the Goonies. He's Troy. He's the guy who wears the the sportsman jacket. Oh, okay, so that actually brings up an interesting point that I had, and uh, it was just a feeling in the beginning, but it kind of got stronger and reinforced by what actually happened. This the main characters in this they're the bullies yeah right it's like it's like all of the 80s movies bullies like imagine a movie about them imagine a movie about the bad guy from karate kid that's what these guys feel like bad guys to me a hundred right thousand percent they are (laughs) they are essentially charlie mac and dennis they're the bad guys (laughs) you shouldn't be rooting for these people no, but unlike Always Sunny, which is a national treasure, and you're meant to hate them, they're assholes. That's why it's funny because the joke is on them. These guys, yeah, they're, we're meant to root for these guys when they go like scene to scene, just kind of being dicks to everybody. Yeah, not even kind of. They <laughs> are dicks, especially are... <laughs> certain characters, they're dicks too. Yeah, I mean, we'll, um, we'll, we'll get to the nerd character, but they're yeah. just horrible to everybody, including him. It, it especially this group of girls that they pick up they pick up yes quote unquote the ugly girls which i would <sighs> say none of those girls are ugly uh, no. one is more voluptuous than the others but certainly not ugly in any way no if anything it, it's the it's the makeup and the costume design that they put these characters in exactly yeah i was gonna say ugly. it's just it's just like the 80s hair and and costume that looks weird and ugly to us because that's not what we grew up with. Like, that's not the cool clothes that we grew up with. So it looks weird to us. But like the other thing is it matches like the, the, the attractiveness makeup of that, of that group of girls matches the guys entirely. Exactly. Like they're one-to-one they're, they're punching at their weight level. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's not like they're picking up Diane Franklin here. Um, <laughs> and, and it's kind of weird because when the three guys talk to these three girls, they're, they're trying to pick them up to come back to Gary's house. And the girls are very, they're like, what kind of drugs do you have? Do you have cocaine? Yeah. What is up? With, so, okay. This, you mentioned there being like a, like a, like almost like a language barrier, even though this is an American movie, there's like a humor culture barrier. Is that one of them? Because they are very upfront about what kind of drugs you got you got coke uh, exactly i <laughs> this has to be a language thing because one i don't think i would ever be ballsy enough to be like do you have cocaine <laughs> yeah, out in the open in like the middle of like an ice cream shop right Let alone would i ever think that anyone that i've ever known in high school would be capable of obtaining cocaine <laughs> Like, yeah, like hard party drugs that you really only get in big. I mean, I guess they're in Hollywood. So who knows? Maybe teenagers in the 80s in Hollywood were doing weird shit like that. But I I don't know. I would I would even at this time, I would have to Google. How do you buy cocaine? Like, where do you (laughs) buy cocaine? (laughs) One drug, please. How do you do cocaine? Is cocaine like the thing that you inject or do you smoke it? I don't know. Is I feel like we've crack? had this conversation before too in other episodes where we like we don't know how drugs work. Yeah. <laughs> like did, did the filmmakers think that that's what American teenagers were doing that were that we're all we're all just doing hard drugs in, in high school? It's exactly. And, it's and one had, of those and, things and had dealers apparently. where it's just like it's it's just this obscure weird like Americans do drugs. Like I can understand them having pot 100%. Yeah, that would that would be believable, but, but not not think like cocaine and uppers and all these like really weird things that aren't aren't what you think of as being like teenager drugs, like exactly alcohol and pot. That's probably it, pretty much. Um, but the our three quote unquote heroes pick up the women because they promised them cocaine, and they go back to Gary's house where they start putting the moves on the girls 
until they ask for the cocaine in which they go to the kitchen and they cut like sugar and flour together to make cocaine. And all I could think of is when those girls snort that they're going to be like making bread up their nose. Right. Yeah, like, like, that, like First of all, ow. Second of all, are, are they going to die? Are, yeah. They can't if I, if I inhale coffee, mate, that yeah, that's can't be good for the lungs. Um, but they do. And like the girls, they're like, they're snorting it. And like, this is some of the best cocaine I've ever done. And the, <laughs> the, the more voluptuous woman, the gag is that she, she snorts up all the cocaine and she's like, Oh yeah, this is great. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, kind of weird. Hmm. I, I could understand like the gag once, like maybe one of them does it. And then the other two kind of chicken out. But the fact that they all do it is is really weird. And they all comment on how good it is. Exactly. Which makes me think like they it's a gag that they don't do cocaine, but then they should have led on with that. Right. Oh, uh, like they're trying to be cool. Exactly. And it's like, oh, well, what about see that 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 could have been an interesting gag where we're both the, the group of girls and the guys are both like trying to put on a show to like make it look like they're cooler and and more more grown up to the other ones but they're like they cut they like they keep going with each other's bluffs you know the sequel should be from the those three girls perspective where essentially at the, at the 10 minute mark like they're in the hospital <laughs> or no they like pick them up like we see if everything from their perspective and then we we get this scene essentially we're, we're going to save budget here, Greg. We're going to use the oh. same scene, but we see it from the girl's perspective. Okay. Where they're like, they're commenting like, okay, so they're off making the drugs, right? So the girls are like, I'm a, I'm terrified. I've never done I've this. Never, Diane, I've never done cocaine before. What do you mean you never done? I thought you said you did. What? I never done it. I thought you said you did. And they're like, exactly. yeah, arguing about it. Well, what are we going to do? They're expecting us to be cool drug girls, I guess. Yep. Um, it would be the last American virgin too. Uh still virgining i don't know um but essentially we <laughs> drugs would... are cool exactly drugs are, co- drugs are cool <laughs> do drugs uh, <laughs> but after they've sniffed up all the flour and sugar the guys pair off with the girls and i wouldn't even call it mild sexual assault full-on sexual assault starts to happen as each guy starts <laughs> to grope and make out with their respective girl, except for Gary. Gary's striking out because the girl he's with is just not interested. No. But it, isn't it weird that the 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 handsome one, Rick, the girl he's making out with is like, stop, don't do this, stop. But they like keep progressing forward. Yeah, it's it's the the consensualness of it is definitely in question. Exactly. <laughs> but not for these guys. These guys are all about not getting those shirts off and seeing boobies. Yes. Which like, isn't that what every great boner comedy is really about? (laughs) Isn't it just about seeing boobs? Uh, Um, It's what every boner comedy is about. I don't know about if you can throw the word great in there. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, There is one good gag in this scene where the 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 fat guy i like how i call the woman voluptuous but this guy is fat um <laughs> fuck that guy yeah seriously, apparently guy. he you know what it's interesting though he also had the best gag in hot chili uh where so the girl that david is with she's like i'm nervous go stand out on the balcony count to 100 and come back in and i'll be naked waiting for you unbeknownst to david yeah Who's standing out there? Gary's parents come home, and all the girls have left, and all the guys. And the parents are commenting on, like, oh my God, our kids are sinful, blah, 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 sex. And the mom has to lay down. And <laughs> she mom, turns never. Yeah. She turns the lights off. And then David comes out from the balcony and starts spooning with Gary's mom. <laughs> and then he's like, he's still trying to make it with the mom. Yeah, he's like he's like he's like going right for her boobs, being real handsy, and she's just like, not now, whatever the dad's name was, because she's turned around, she doesn't see who's groping at her, and like he realizes that it's the mom, but still doesn't care, <laughs> and like, then maybe I can make this work exactly, uh, but he runs out and he gets into the car, and we get we actually get the cars playing, shake it up. Oh my god, I know, I love the cars. <laughs> That's one of my favorite '80s bands. 
seventies too, I guess. I was so sad to hear them play, like, and they played it a couple times too. Like they got their they money's did. worth all these li- these like licensed songs, and they just kept playing it. it oh. They played each one for the first time, and then there's there's a point in the movie probably the halfway point where they literally start recycling the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, they start recycling. A couple of songs get played more than once. I think there are two different car songs, though. I think so, too. Um, hard to keep track, though, because it's hard to get through the movie. Uh, we transition to school where all the guys are jumping over the horse. Is that what that thing is? Right? The, the, uh, the, the pommel horse. The, 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 yeah, pommel gym, horse. the gymnastics thing. Yes. And uh, the, the gag is that uh, the fat guy can't get over it. Because he's fucking Cause he's fat. fat. <laughs> he's fat. Uh, Get it? And it's all played Fucking to movie. Devo's crack that whip. And we get the nerd yeah. character who is looking through a peephole into the girls' locker room and they're all naked. Because, then, of course. And then the guys come in. Like, the rest of the, the, the school or the class comes in and they start giving the nerd character shit for looking at naked girls. Oh, he's been I, I, peeping. I wasn't peeping. I was just uh, I don't know, looking at the bulletin board. Exactly. He's like, well, you got a boner, though. He's like, no, I don't. My dick is huge. And then they literally, oh my I God. kid you not, they start measuring each other's dicks. It's like, it's a whole scene that I guess is yeah. supposed to be funny. They have a dick measuring contest, a literal dick measuring contest. They all stand in line in their tidy whities and get their dicks measured by our main character, Gary. Yes. Who's just having a grand old time measuring dicks. And I, I, I don't, I think we've seen this maybe in another Canon film, or I feel like I've seen this. Maybe it was Porky's. I must've missed this part of my adolescence <laughs> yeah, where we measured dicks. I mean, I guess the eighties were crazy time and everyone was doing Coke measuring dicks. Just, they don't give a shit. Yeah. Wild times, apparently. Yeah. Where, uh, where, where was that when we were in high school? Uh, it was, yeah. Anyways, the nerd turns out ugh. he has a nine inch long. Um, and that's the scene. <laughs> Get it? We're, we're starting our trend here of there being no central plot. It's just kind of random boner comedy teenage hijinks scenes just kind of strung together randomly with yeah. no connective tissue. It's just the same characters doing boner comedy things that don't mean anything with, you know, they haven't got no relation to one another in it, it, it. It's personified in the next scene where Gary lets the air out of Diane Franklin's t- tires of her moped played to Ario speed wagon. Um, I'll keep on loving you. <laughs> Gary is now the hero. He's like, Oh, I'll drive you to school. And they kind of have a conversation on the way to school. And Gary doesn't get that fucking Diane Franklin does not give a shit about him. No, it, like he doesn't seem there, interested. There's there's no chemistry between them whatsoever. Uh, and then the literally the next scene is they're at a party and Diane Franklin's with Rick, his buddy. Which they look like they're a better couple. Rick's a handsome dude, Diane Franklin's a pretty girl. Yeah, they're they're clearly into each other. But I think she she'd said in a previous scene, like he Gary had asked her out when he dropped her off at school. Hey, you busy tonight? Oh yeah, so, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm sorry. I'm busy. Maybe another time. And then he, he sees her at the party, and he's all depressed about it because she lied to him. And but he, again, like he, there was no chemistry there. I don't know why this kid is so broken up about her being with his friend. They're clearly a much better couple. Well, it's usually like there's like a little bit of uh, I don't know, courting, right? Like you don't just come out and ask a girl to go out with you. Like you got to talk. You got to make sure that you're compatible. Um, Not I don't in this know. movie. It's, food, it's Phil, weird. We, we, we've got lots of weird shit to do, Phil. There's no time for developing a relationship in the proper way. <laughs> Making it, the audience actually care about this couple getting together so that when they don't, we're depressed with the character. Exactly. And it's so weird uh, because at the, at the, the party... Rick and Diane Franklin, they, you know, they go over to Gary and like, oh, yeah, we're going out. And then they introduce another friend, another female friend to Gary. And uh, she, she her name is Rose. She's played by Kimmy Robertson. Another one of those like I've seen you in things kind of actresses. And we've heard her. For, she's got a very distinctive voice. Yes, she does a lot of voices. 
um but she like she was in the tick cartoon um the louis show <laughs> i don't know if you remember that animated cartoon from when yeah. we were kids uh pepper ann uh she was in twin peaks that's i know her from twin peaks oh, okay i sound like jay from uh fucking red letter media right now <laughs> Look at that, with that artsy shit yeah exactly oh David man Lynch. I'm so fucking cool. She was also a voice in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures, which was a TV animated cartoon where Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter did the voices of their respective characters. Really? Yeah. Kind of weird, right? So she actually kind of had a career after yeah. this. Probably better than most of them. And she's cute as hell in this movie. And yeah. they, they introduce her to, Car- to Gary to be his love interest. And he has no interest in her. But no. she's she's, she's cute. Yeah, she she's 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 cute and she's like throwing herself at him too, which is the just it's so bonkers of these characters who are apparently so obsessed with just kind of like getting laid. It's a boner comedy, of course that's what they're all about. But he just does not give a fuck and he's hourly mean to this poor girl too. Exactly. And yeah, you're right. She throws herself yeah. at him. They a slow song comes on and she's like, Hey, let's dance. And I love he's this song. At, He's looking at Diane Franklin and Rick dancing, totally ignoring this girl who's who's da- literally dancing with him right now. Yep. Does not make any sense whatsoever. Uh, which then spurs Gary to drink a lot of Jack Daniels and make an ass out of himself at the party. Uh, <laughs> and then drive drunk. Yes. Uh, the fat friend does the great job of escorting Gary to the car, to where he's encouraged to drive home drunk where gary makes a further ass out of himself in front of his parents friends as he tries to hit on an old lady yeah i mean so just the fact that he made it home alive is kind of astounding I- i'm shocked and offended that he-, he was able to drive home practically blacked out but anyway yeah, he-, he comes home and his parents are i guess having a dinner party right yeah and and yeah one of the old ladies like oh look how you've grown and then yeah he he's like I'll sleep better with you on my bed, Mrs. Roswell, or whatever her name was. It's, it's kind of weird. Uh, they're not even they're not even Ellen Burstein pretty, these older women. <laughs> um, the gold standard. Exactly. But the next day at school, Gary is writing in his notebook, Karen, over and over and over again, which I, I remember having crushes in high school. I never just wrote down like, the girl that I was have crushing on in a notebook over and over again. No, is that something could... that you've ever done? No, I mean yeah. you, you see that in movies all the time. I don't think anyone ever actually did that. I mean, just none of the, none of my friends did. You would keep that shit a secret. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Kind of weird. Um, and <laughs> there's like a math problem going on. Gary's not paying attention, so he's he's like pressuring the nerd character to give him the answer. That's the joke. <laughs> he's a nerd, and he's this guy's an idiot and doesn't know math exactly so then we cut back to gary now delivering pizzas the the weird thing about him delivering pizzas was he also delivers beer did you notice that i I noticed in a couple scenes where he's got like a six pack of beer with him too i don't do they do that can you get beer delivered like that i guess if you show id when you pick it up but i think that's another foreign thing also gary's costume (laughs) when he's delivering pizzas i think is a very foreign thing because he's wearing like a neckerchief is he really i didn't yeah like an ascot like fucking fred from uh (laughs) from the scooby-doo show it's it's really weird but yeah he's he's delivering pizzas to the blonde bombshell and she's hot Uh... to trot so Granny course, bombshells back from hot chili. Exactly. Gary does the only sensible thing. He assembles his two other friends to have sex with this woman. It's it's like the exact same scene from hot chili. Dude, it where... is because the fat guy looks through the keyhole and there's the keyhole shape, just like in hot yeah. chili. It's 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 like shot for shot the same scene. They there's there's like an older you know, blonde bombshell lady who's creeping on these teenage boys and they sit and they wait in line while they want to one by one tr- run a train on the old lady it's it's so weird and it's and all the, the only the only difference is that instead of a older german lady she's old like i guess she's hispanic puerto rican i don't know she's got a, just a different accent 
Yeah. But it's the exact same scene. Same actors too, apparently. Isn't pedophilia funny when it happens to teenage boys? <laughs> um, it's a joke. Those crazy kids. And it's but, extremely graphic too. It is. I mean, you see that that fat kid's ass. Just to Casey and the away. Sunshine Band. Yeah. Um, mm. But then the gag is that the husband character comes home and apparently it gets loose that they're all banging his wife. And then antics ensue and they get chased out of the house. Uh, huh, huh. She got I'm away with that it. They didn't play Shake It Up by the cars at this point. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, but <laughs> my cars. No. <laughs> my cars. As they, they can... interact with cars, it's kind of on the nose. <laughs> exactly. Ruin Casey and the Sunshine Band. You can take one for the team. Leave the cars exactly. alone. Uh, Rick is now asking Gary for they're at they're at they're back at like the malt shop or whatever. Rick is now asking <laughs> Gary for keys to his grandma's house, his dead grandma's house, so he can take <laughs> Diane Franklin back to have sex with her. Greg, usually when like the usually when someone passes away, doesn't the like the house get something happens to it, right? There's like an estate sale or. Yeah, that they, they will sell it, they'll sell it or put it on the market or something. I guess it's it's weird no matter what, because either the grandma died a while back and they just haven't so like why is the house still there and, and empty? The the family probably would have sold it by then, or the grandma like just died. In which case it's weird that they want to go back there and bang. Don't that house that is haunted as shit. Scene, though that would be a scene in the movie. The, the 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 ghost of the grandma scaring kids or just like or gary commenting like hey yeah my grandma died last weekend yeah you think that would be something like a throwaway line but it, it's just kind of mentioned way more offhand than that what like in one scene like, oh yeah my she my grandma when my grandma died it's it's been empty wait what exactly oh your grandma died i'm sorry about that that could be like a character trait for gary Instead of looking like a doe-eyed idiot. <laughs> Give us something, movie. Give us a reason to like this guy. Um, but to make Gary even more reprehensible, he plans on causing strife in Rick and Diane Franklin's uh, relationship by getting Rick to bang a hooker. There's a, there's a red-headed hooker. And uh, Gary and his fat friend are like, oh, yeah, we've been like nine times now. And Ricky's like, well, I'm interested in it. And then we get a really awkward scene where they solicit prostitution from this lady of the night. Uh, and it it makes Gary vomit. Yeah, it's this is this is where the movie really takes kind of a dark turn where it the, it just becomes legitimately unfunny. But to the point where you think like this is a drama or Gary's it feels gonna like commit suicide. Yeah, like he's <laughs> visibly emotionally scarred by this experience and it's yeah. all played really seriously it all you know what it, it almost started to remind me of like those pro abstinence kinds of videos that you would occasionally yes. see in health class where it's like don't have sex because you know you'll your rifle will be ruined and you'll get stds which is exactly what fucking happens in this movie yeah uh, uh i did feel bad for the fat friend where the hooker is like, she essentially is, she's like, hey, fatso, let's get this done. Oh, and she's incredibly starts, foul mouthed. She he starts shaking. Like <laughs> he starts visibly shaking, which great great acting on him. Um yeah. And then he's got the right to be afraid and disgusted. <laughs> yeah. The next day, all the kids are assembled in class, and you can see the three of them are scratching their crotchular area and it's because <laughs> the scientific term like the crotchular region the crotchular region they all got crabs ha ha they got an std yes because comedy crabs which is which is kind of interesting i did a little crab research um <laughs> a little, little crab research yeah so you can you can uh like there's a special comb that you can get yeah, like, like kind the, of like a lice comb. Yeah, the very to fine to yourself. They're also called they're pretty much lice, right? And they feed on blood. Now, I guess Ugh. men have a bigger issue with it because men are more prone to having 
full body uh, hair all over the place. So you can, <laughs> it's not just like a pubic area. You can get lice or these crabs anywhere. You can also get them in your eyebrows. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm just imagining this like disgusting lice superhighway from crotchular region to eyebrow. Exactly. Uh, if you get them in your eyebrows, you're actually supposed to, or your, your, I'm sorry, I didn't mean eyebrows. I meant eyelashes. What? If you get them in your eyelashes, you're actually supposed to cut your eyelashes down and then smear uh, petroleum jelly on there. Essentially, you're going to suffocate them. Oh my God. Yeah. That sounds terrible. Uh, so it causes itching, redness, and inflammation. But the good thing is crab lice are not known to transmit diseases. Well, that's good. I mean, I guess, you know, the, there's an ups- a silver lining to having nasty parasites living on your skin. And well, they still uh, carry diseases. They don't carry plague or anything. Two hmm. percent of the human population will have crabs within their um, lifetime. That's shockingly high. You think it's shock? I think it's shockingly low that two percent would get it. <laughs> I think that this would be more common. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe maybe it's because it's not like an infectious disease. It's less common. It's harder to transmit. It's still I don't know. Any amount seems high to me, but. I guess I can imagine it like being less common than like actual like like viral or bacterial infections. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, the the most common STDs are bacterial vaginosis, chlamydia, gonorrhea, hepatitis, herpes. <laughs> so there you go. Don't have sex, kids, because yeah. all the bad things will happen to you. <laughs> it's a- Life only gets worse. Don't um, hire a weird prostitute who's been dubbed over for some reason. Exactly. She'll give you crabs. I wonder I wonder if there's like statistics on the most common STDs to get based off of age. A- age, not AIDS. AIDS. <laughs> uh, you think there's like like a some that are more common in certain age groups? I would say like herpes is probably going to be like a like a thing you catch when you're younger, not when you're older. Huh. Because you're probably like, again, you're horned up, right? You're probably, probably trying to bang, you know, the old Spanish woman as you're delivering pizzas. <laughs> but as you get older, you get more picky and you probably don't have as many uh, promiscuous one night stands. Hmm. Well, I mean, right? except for except for the except for the, the pizza lady. Yeah, exactly. She's, she's banging every pizza boy in town, apparently. She's she's an outlier. She's like <laughs> that reason why there's that sliver in the pie graph of like everything. <laughs> That's like the thing that you think is a rounding error, but no, there's someone in there. There's someone exactly. in that little in that 0.01 percent. As you get older, I think you get into the more exotic um <laughs> stds the, the, the more rare and exciting pokemon i mean exactly. uh, stds oh it's it's shiny chlamydia um <laughs> weird but anyway so these these guys are scratching their junk pretty hardcore so they get i i would say for being a group of dumbasses they do have the great idea of let's go to the public pool and drown the lice yeah, it's funny you mentioned the thing about the petroleum jelly bay that because that's kind of what they try to do in this. They just they 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 soak in the pool for like four hours, right? I guess yeah. chlorinated water. I mean, I can I can under I can see a teenage brain thinking that would be an okay thing to do if you're afraid to go to someone which they think they eventually do. But I, I, you could it, it makes sense. You you could common sense your way around that idea. Yep. Uh, but then you know they get the great the other great idea of just going to the pharmacy. So they have an awkward conversation with this old pharmacist where it's, <laughs> it's essentially like Charlie trying to sell drugs in Always Sunny. Like the Gary character is like, we've got this, but it's, it's for a friend. And like, just come out and fucking <laughs> like, say what you have. Yeah, like nervously talking around it, kind of like using euphemisms that in this poor... I, I love this it's pharmacist so many character. Nose clams. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> so many nose clams. Are good. We're going to pack our butts for you. They're going to be so packed. But yeah, it's it's just kind of weird. Eventually, it comes out that they have crabs, and the guy's like, "Oh, just smear this cream on your junk. It's four dollars." <laughs> yeah, if they just come on and said it, he'd be like, oh, "I got the just just stuff for you." Here you and go. I could, 
I could see how this scene was supposed to be humorous, but it just falls flat, especially like the when the the fat character is paying for it. Uh, he like writes in his book, he's like crab cream, like to to for the deductions. Yeah, we, what what was up with that? I don't know. I thought that was going to pay off later, but it doesn't. Like, is he? It's like he's balancing a checkbook almost. But he's giving but he away cash. Hard cash. Yeah, I don't get it. And it, he's paying. He pays for everything in this movie. Do we establish yes. that he's like the rich kid or something? He must be. I mean, look at him. He's probably can afford to eat really well. <laughs> it's also I. They also do this guy a disservice for giving him shirts that are like ten sizes too small. Yeah, I guess. How, how as an actor who weighs a little more how, how what does it feel like to go into an audition for the fat sidekick character i think i think we talked about this one before that there's an actress she's known as the hooker right like she, a lot of her roles are she's a hooker mm-hmm. she's the old ugly hooker and and that's when the she niche. Was, she, when she was asked like how do you feel being like recognized as the old ugly hooker in media she's mm-hmm. like well i probably make more than you do a year and it's kind of like yeah, yeah. that's true i'm sure it's weirder for us but yeah i guess they they own it they know they know that that's the look they have and they can get those parts and they just excel at that it reminds me of that um that scene in my name is dolomite's my name where there's like the guy who plays the like the evil old white guy in yes. all the black exploitation movies <laughs> And he's like, I'm just the evil old white guy. Yeah, like that's just his niche and he makes it work for him. So I guess that must be what this guy did too. Because yeah, he between this and Hot Chili, uh, I'm sure those are the roles that he got. So uh, th- good. there's only one other movie that this guy's in and it's called The World According to Garp where he plays a wrestler, uncredited wrestler. Um, uh, which I guess this is a Robin Williams movie. Interesting. Hmm. I've never seen that one. But yeah, so anyways, uh, tons of fun. Writes down that he bought genital cream and the, 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 the gag ends. It's never brought up again. Nope. I guess they, they got better. Time passed. They used the cream and it worked. So uh, good joke movie. We're back at the uh, the soda jerk place and Gary is informed that Rick has taken diane franklin somewhere to bang and then we get a scene of diane franklin and rick having sex yeah i i wasn't expecting i mean little did i know that it would get worse but i wasn't expecting them to show karen topless in this usually they they like the main love interest they don't but they did and it was a little jarring it's interesting i don't think i've ever seen diane franklin do a topless scene before so it's kind of interesting that she like for this movie oh yeah she did it like almost i think this is like her first movie too so it's just kind of weird that they she did it right off the bat but yeah i I, again it's it's super sleazy and i hate it but at the same time you, you, you you we compare it to all those other sleazy movies that we watch at least it wasn't a rape scene. At least they put the boobs into like a consensual sexual encounter between, no, I guess they're not adults, but it could have been way worse, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Great glass half full scene. (laughs) There we go. That's as much credit as I'll give this movie because it goes very far downhill very quickly from here. Yes. So uh, Rick and Diane Franklin, they go to the soda place and Rick informs Gary that they had sex Gary gets very upset at this because he's the one who wanted to have sex with Diane Franklin and he leaves in a in a tissy. And then we again, cut. why though? Like she's not been nice to him. She's basically just kind of been basically like kept him at arm's distance, but there's no friendship, there's no chemistry. They haven't had a relationship. There's why is he so obsessed? He's a simp. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Gary. Uh, and it gets uh, so I won't I won't give away your reveal, but um, it gets worse. So yeah, the next day, Diane Franklin and Rick are having an argument inside of the library, in which Diane Franklin informs Rick that she's pregnant, and then Rick 
dumps her. Right. Gary takes this moment to pounce because Diane Franklin is vulnerable. She's emotional. <sighs> and Gary, the simp lord, is like, I'll take care <laughs> of you. I'll help you get that abortion. And then he goes, then Gary goes back in and he has an argument with Rick uh, that he, Rick is being a jerk, which Rick is being a jerk. But yeah, you know, I guess uh, we're not seeing it from 100% of rick's point of view he could be really scared too he just doesn't know how to that's just how he's expressing what's happening yeah. right sure um i could see in the heat of the moment any teenage boy <laughs> being terrified oh that, sure oh my god you're that, having that a thing child that they talk about in health class as the main deterrent <laughs> yes or hey use a condom because this could happen the um, worst has happened the worst has happened and gary does take kindly to this and neither does rick so Rick and the gang, besides Gary, leave for a ski trip because it's it's right before Christmas break now. And we get a scene afterwards where Diane Franklin and Gary go to the dead grandma's house. And Gary yeah. now has to raise money to get Diane Franklin an abortion. So before we get too far down that plot thread... Did, this is, I think, the only spot where we hear about the grandma being dead, right? He mentions mm-hmm. it offhand. Like, so did she get thrown out because she's pregnant? Like, why is he bringing her here? I think it's because she's going to get... He is supposed to go on the ski trip because he has, like, the skis with him. So he's mm, right. He's he's faking that he went. And I think because after an abortion, there's probably, like, some downtime. Yeah, like a recovery period, yeah. So she's probably saying that she went somewhere too, so they can do this. Oh, uh, okay. But so it's she, never explained that well. No, okay. That that actually makes sense. So they they say, "Oh, mom, dad, I'm on the, I'm going on the ski trip." Where they're actually, she's just going to be recovering at the ground. Okay, got it. Because I was like, like, why is she? Why is he like giving her this like secret crash pad? Like, did she get, is there some whole like plot thread of her parents, you know, freaking out and like kicking her out of the house or something, which uh, God, that would have been, I mean, this is already gets depressing enough as it is. I can only imagine what that scene would have done to the trajectory of this movie. Exactly. Yeah, but I mean, like it's, sh- I don't know. They should have done more because Diane Franklin's role really is just relegated to she's the pretty one, which yeah, she is, but there should have been more to it. Yeah, because we they don't really do. A, I mean, we, we eventually feel very sympathetic for her, but we don't get enough earlier on in the movie to make us like have this have this hit has be as impactful as it should be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like she's basically. Yeah, she's just like the, the pretty girl, but she's kind of not mean, but she kind of ignores the main character. Like there's no there's no tie there. You know what I mean? exactly exactly uh so i i don't what part did you give up on this this movie yeah maybe are, are we getting I'll, close we're yeah so it's basically right after this and i'll i'll, I'll just i'll i'll say set the scene for all of our, our our poor listeners who have to experience this vicariously through us uh we get a scene right after the they, he takes her to the grandma's house where they actually go visit the abortion clinic and the doctor is saying you know, hey, here, here's 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 the procedure. Um, it's it's relatively straightforward, but it costs money, and that's when you mentioned like, oh, they need to raise money, two hundred fifty bucks, yeah, which is a lot of money. He's like, but Gary's like, okay, no matter, like, we'll 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 make it work, and so begins the most uncomfortable montage. I'm assuming it's a montage because I didn't know how I don't know how it ends, but it starts. The montage starts where we get this like upbeat pop song. It wasn't one that I recognized, but it was like it was like a dance song. It was a pop song. And it's a montage of cuts back and forth between Gary. Dude, sorry to interrupt you. That's fucking oh, you too. Is that the you? Oh my God, you're right. <laughs> it it is. It's a fucking dance song. I'm sorry. Keep going. <laughs> no, no. That that just it, it increases the gross out factor of this. Like it's not the song does not match what's going on. Not even a little bit. This is like a serious, like majorly dramatic thing happening. So, but it's a, it's a, it's a fun pop song montage of Gary looking for trying to like find money, 
like asking around to get to get money for, for the abortion. But the worst part of it is we cut back to Karen in the abortion clinic. And I'll set this shot for you where we get the camera. It's panning up her body from her waist. She's completely disrobed. We get a long gratuitous shot of her chest. And then as yep. the camera continues to pan up, we get a sh- close up of her face and this poor girl is sobbing because she's terrified about getting an abortion. And we realize that she's disrobed because she's like putting on the hospital gown before the procedure happens. And then we, we like cut to her getting her, her like legs into like the, um, like there's a name for those things. Stirrups. Like, stirrups yeah. Pregnant women will, sometimes put their legs in there when they're giving birth the just that scene of like the gratuitous topless shot of this girl who's crying about having to get an abortion a a a mentally scarring experience for this girl it's just the most disgusting thing that we've seen in any of these canon movies so far i shut the goddamn movie off right then and there so greg um (laughs) it was bad i powered through and I can, I can um, totally, I am so uh, impressed. <laughs> I don't know I can how you totally can respect going. why you stopped. Yeah. Right. It is. It's weird. It's weird that we see Diane Franklin naked crying. Yeah. And, and again, like this is the, that you two song is playing. Like it's, it's <laughs> it, so, it it's doesn't so match. Tone deaf. It does not match. It's just, it feels way grosser than even remember that horrible scene in death wish three where Marina Sirtis is getting raped by those gang members. They would that, be like that nasty mattress in like the blasted out building. Yeah. And they, this is way to be a square during that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what that would have been like. Huey Lewis in the news over a horrible rape scene. Like that's the only way that that could have been worse than what we got in the last American version. It was just disgusting. Um, <laughs> please phil tell me how the movie ended because so i i did not find out <laughs> you there's fucking 10 more minutes left so the abortion goes as smoothly as possible um and diane franklin and gary go back to the dead grandma's house uh gary is very respectful giving her her space and being a good I guess care for it sounds like care care yeah caretaker um and they they kiss they embrace Gary confesses his love to Diane Franklin and there's there's a little bit of reciprocation there she appreciates all the the effort that Gary has put in uh the that's, next day that oh, feels wh- so like that feels so exploitative like she's so vulnerable at that point why would you lay that on her <laughs> oh a hundred percent a hundred percent. I mean, I knew that. Um, I, I kind of I had a feeling that was what was going to happen, but still, still gross. Sorry, continue. <laughs> uh, so as they kiss, Ario Speedwagon, Ario Speedwagon plays uh, Open Arms. No, no, that's Journey. I'm sorry. Journey's Open Arms plays and they, <sighs> they kiss and it kind of crescendos into them embracing, but not having sex. Oh, thank God. Uh, the next day, Gary is buying her a birthday present because it's now also conveniently her birthday so happy again, birthday you had a really traumatic experience <laughs> gary buys a locket and it says to karen with love and he's super pumped he's super jazzed and he goes to the party and everyone's there fat so the girl <laughs> that he rebuked and then he finally sees Diane Franklin in the, the kitchen and she's kissing Rick and she's back with Rick. What? And Gary starts to cry. He gets in his car and drives away and the credits roll. <sighs> Greg, I'm not making that up. Wow. <laughs> he fucking dis- <laughs> he, he gets her the abortion. He confesses his love. They embrace and kiss. There seems to be some kind of reciprocation, I, but literally the next fucking day, she's uh, back with Rick. I, I, uh, I, I, 
I've got a lot of hate in me right now. <laughs> and I don't know where it belongs <laughs> because just fuck this movie. Wow. Isn't it kind of weird? I, I mean, I guess I don't know what else I would have expected. I would have expected him to get Diane Franklin and for him yeah, to be a hero. I guess. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's what I was expecting, but like I, maybe it was naive of me to expect that from just based on what we got to force me to shut the movie off. I should have known that they would do something like that. Isn't that that's kind of weird. It's very atypical for an eighties movie for the loser quote unquote loser, not to get the girl. Yeah. And, and it just, it, it makes everyone look like an asshole. Yes. Uh, I had to say like, it was very jarring seeing it happen uh, in the moment. Yeah. And then after the after the movie was over, I got some coffee because I watched <laughs> these movies pretty early. And, and then it hit you like a ton of bricks. And then it kind of, yeah, it did kind of hit me. I was kind of like, I, I can appreciate that the movie didn't give you the stereotypical feel good ending. Sure, and that's, yeah. that's cool. But this is a fucking comedy. And there's nothing funny about this ending. No, no. I mean, like there was a lot earlier on in the movie that was just not funny because it was just jokes that didn't land or things that they thought were fun. They were supposed to be funny, played for last, but that they just fell flat. But it, it got legitimately dramatic and serious towards the end there. And it was just treated with so much disrespect that it just left me feeling really shitty, basically. And the <laughs> fact that it ended the way it did the only worst thing that they could have done is like diane franklin died during the abortion <laughs> gary goes to jail <laughs> oh my god uh so, so yeah like that's that's actually a really good point i i was wondering i mean knowing the era when it was made i was actually wondering they weren't too far removed from like roe v wade i was wondering where that was gonna land on the abortion thing like are they going to make it like, oh, they got an abortion and see, he look how much it ruined their lives. Like, I I wouldn't have put it past this movie to kill her Dude, during that I procedure. Almost. I, th- I was thinking pretty much the same thing. I was like, this is going to be a cautionary tale movie. This yeah, isn't like a, a comedy. Like an, it's a like cautionary an abstinence, tale. anti-abortion kind of thing. I, I Yeah. I was the wondering evils if that was that men do. Yep. Right. But no, they didn't do it. They chickened out. <sighs> God, this. Yeah, it's after hearing the ending, I'm sure I'll probably have other thoughts about it. I'm gonna need to digest that. But yeah, like I said, there's I there's a lot of like I can't put my finger on it, but I just hate this movie. I don't I don't know where it belongs just yet. But it's so, definitely somewhere in this movie. It's I don't know. In it and as he's driving away, it's playing that sappy song like uh, essentially it's like I've, i tried my best but it wasn't good enough for you baby yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i got you the abortion but still you said no <laughs> i'm gonna need you to post to our youtube channel you singing that song <laughs> for him driving away <laughs> it's it's just so fucking weird so weird and so this movie is pretty hard to find and I, I, I kind of wondered why, but like, because it, it, out of all the canon films, I would have assumed that their boner comedies would be pretty easy to get a hold of. But like Hot Chili and this really hard to find. And yeah. I, I can see why now. Like th- these movies are dog shit. Yeah. I, I, geez, I, I never thought I'd say this, but like Hot Chili by comparison is a much more respectable a fucking movie. masterpiece. That is fucking Citizen Kane of boner comedies compared to this. Because at least, at least hot chili is as sleazy as it was. It was basically harmless. You know what I mean? Like it didn't it didn't offend the senses the way that this one does. Because at least hot chili kind of knew what it wanted to be, and it pretty much stuck to that formula. It failed spectacularly, and it's I know it's not my it's you know that genre in general is not my cup of tea. But at least it like it stayed within those kind of boundaries, and and. This one definitely tried to be more of like a serious like teen drama, but it failed spectacularly at that too. And almost to like worse effect than if it had just failed at being a boater comedy. Yep. So, but Hey, the music was good. The music was, the music was (laughs) awesome. 
Um, so we watched it on Vimeo. Yeah. I, originally, there was a YouTube link, but the YouTube version sucked. And I was I was really worried that we weren't going to be able to watch this one again. But I, it's time to do, I think, one of our favorite things. Go back to the YouTube uh YouTube thing, comments and read YouTube comments. Oh, good. Because Vimeo, the comments were turned off. I actually did yes. try to go look at that. What what what, what gems did you find? Phil? Lord Destro Productions says if the term simp was a person back in the 80s, <laughs> it would be this dude. <laughs> oh, Gary. Um, but there's also people like Pat L who says great film. Fuck like, you, Pat. Yeah. Uh kind of weird. Uh, here's, here's another good one. Uh, and this one is actually, I wouldn't say insightful, but it is correct. Edward Turner two months ago said, if a girl is not into you, then she isn't into you. Unfortunately for Gary, he was too obsessed with Karen with a K to realize the obvious Rose adored him, right? He not, Rose for he, sure. Team, exactly. He not only didn't give Rose the time of day, but at times, he was downright rude to her. Part of my heart goes out to the guy, but he should have known better. You know what? I want to see that movie. I want to exactly. see the, 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 the Last American Virgin verse split where he actually like, hey, Rose is pretty cool. She's into me. She's pretty. She seems like a lot of fun. Oh, no. That's not that's not the sequel, Greg. The sequel that we'll get is Vindictive Rose, realizing that Gary's an asshole and she punctures co- uh, holes in the condom of Rick to get <laughs> fucking Diane Franklin pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where Rose turns out to be like a serial killer. Yes, it's good that Gary oh sidestepped God. that, but he didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that would be hilarious if she's like a like a Black Widow and she's trying to like lure all these teenage boys into her murder dungeon <laughs> yeah it's go rose I'm, I'm even more team rose on that on that movie hey i yeah exactly i uh i love rose she was great in this movie but yeah um <laughs> albert a- abel hernandez uh says that this is horrible <laughs> yeah um, you and me uh, abel Let, wait and a lot of compliments on the soundtrack which is great because the soundtrack is the only redeeming quality of this film. And that's why I'm going to give it a solid one and a half because I enjoyed every song that I heard. Yeah. I can't argue that all they, their music choices while uh, extremely poorly timed, the songs themselves are good. I'm going to give the songs five out of five. But this This movie is a negative infinity. I want to throw in a volcano. Now, Greg, I know we usually do this after we talk about what we watched besides this, <laughs> but I, I have a, you know, I think I'm more open to the boner comedy. Yeah, um, it's it definitely, I think probably you're probably more of a comedy guy in general. I, I like a good comedy, but I think it's definitely more your genre than mine for sure. So also the year that this movie came out, the let me, let me set it, the year was 1982 and blazing up the charts was not the last american virgin um the movie fucking bombed it barely made its five million dollar budget back wow which i'm impressed it did even that much right it's i don't know I, i don't know sometimes i'm kind of like a comedy aimed at teens but it it failed but also in 1982 we had classics like E.T., Rocky Three, Porky's. Porky's came out this year. Star Trek Two, Poltergeist, Annie. But Good also year. one of the best teen comedies, in my opinion, also came out. Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Uh-huh. Now, directed by Amy Heckerling and written by Cameron Crowe who's also done Jerry Maguire, almost famous vanilla sky. Like he has done legit movies, legit movies. Yeah. Fast times at Ridgemont high is based off of a book that was written about the kids of a real California high school. And they adapted it into a movie. Okay. This movie has, I would say fast times at Ridgemont high is the anti 
Um, what movie did we just watch? Last American Virgin. Last American Virgin. <laughs> oh, While there are excellent, all, <laughs> there's a lot of similarities in the movies and like in some of the sets and like some of the settings. Mm-hmm. Fast so Times jerks. is legitimately hilarious. At least the last time I saw it, and it <laughs> it Uh-oh. does start. I I mean, it's a classic, right? Uh, I'm yeah, just I've, saying, I've, like I haven't the, seen it, but I've I definitely heard of it. The and last time I watched yeah. it, I had a great time. Um, okay. And it stars actual movie stars. Sean Penn, <laughs> Jennifer Jason Lee, Judge Reinhold, Phoebe Cates, Eric Stoltz. Like, there are legitimate actors yeah. in this fucking movie. And that's why I suggest we exercise in other similar movies. And episode 52 oh, okay. will be Fast Times at Ridgemont High. So a little comparison. So, yeah, we were we were chatting about this a little bit before, but I think, yeah, I think that makes sense because it's it's you say it's the anti last American virgin. I I was going to ask why you said that, but I think I'll, I'll reserve those questions. I'll, I'll watch it for myself and I'll see if I can draw those similarity or the, the anti similarities, I guess. But, yeah, it's it's one of those things that I. I mean, it's it's pretty popular, pretty well known is like 80s com- teen comedies. I've, I've never seen it um, cautiously optimistic. I can see is would you qualify this as a boner comedy or just kind of more general teen comedy? I, I would kind of qua- quantify it as like kind of like a hangout comedy, okay. right? Like you get there's multiple characters. Obviously, there's like the the main character, but there's a lot of. I would almost call them main characters in this movie. Kind of an ensemble or something. And Cameron Crowe kind of has like this, you know, like, I guess it's not really Cameron Crowe who does like the hangout movies, but have you ever seen like Dazed and Confused? No, I have not. Um, It's kind of like Richard Linklater does these movies where it's kind of like, we're going to watch a day in the life of these people right now. slice of life kind of thing where it's, but it's more about like characters I- interacting with each other, like some like heavy, like dialogue, heavy kinds of things. Exactly. Less about no, plot. No one has cancer in days or in uh, <laughs> fast times of Richmond high. Right. Okay. Like there's not, there's nothing heavy about it. Um, okay. I mean, uh, I'll say this, there, there might be heavy parts, but it, this movie knows what it is. Right. Okay. It is, I would say a more realistic version of, of high school high school behavior yeah yeah so I, I guess is are they are the main characters is this is their core motivation trying to get laid there is one character whose core motivation is trying to get laid everyone else is just trying to have a good time okay i i, I can be on board with that that's that's one of that's a personality trait that should be an oddball side character not your main character which okay you got and i would you, even you say on that board. the character that wants to get laid his his motivation, like it's said a couple times, but he's not constantly going like, oh man, I need to have sex. I need to have sex, <laughs> right? Coke man. Exactly. So <laughs> uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High will be our next film. And if you don't like this one, I will never suggest. <laughs> <laughs> this is like your last ditch effort to get Greg to like a, yes. a teen comedy from the 80s. I will never suggest another. There, I will never suggest another boner comedy. I would suggest other different kinds of comedies. But I will give up. I will never try to find a boner comedy <laughs> to get you to like it because this is the least boner boner comedy. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm I'm over with that. I'll keep an open mind. I it's I definitely want to like. If you're listening, I'm not against comedies. I love Airplane. I love Naked Gun. They're like those are the kind of like slapstick kind of things, or dark comedies like um, The Big Lebowski. Yes, I, I like I love those. I love those kind of like smarter movie. Either go really smart with it, or I love just dumb shit like people falling downstairs. I think is hilarious. I shouldn't, but I do. Like Airplane, The Naked Guns, like those kind of movies. It's it's, it's something about this niche, the teen, the teen comedy. I, I never really liked American Pie either back in the resurgence of it. I can so see we'll, that. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see how fast times at Ridgemont high stacks up. This is on the criterion collection too, by the way, fast times at Ridgemont high is a criterion release. Yes. Yeah. So, wow. uh, I think this, this will be the second criterion movie that we've watched. Oh God. After fuck, what was it? Love Love streams. streams. (laughs) (laughs) 
They'll just give any any old shit a Criterion release. Hey, I I think I defended Love Streams more than you. Um, I, yeah, I, I saw the camera sh- I saw the shadow of the camera way too many times in Love Streams for me to respect it as serious cinema. John Cassavetes was dying from fucking cancer while he was made. He was just trying to bang those movies out. The <laughs> <laughs> Crit and Inheritance for its kids, I guess. Oh man. So what other movies have you been watching this week so many better movies phil so many better movies so (laughs) um light years ahead of this of this trash so um we did something new this year we we so we typically will do i'm sure i've mentioned on the show before we we usually do like a calendar for for october like a halloween horror movie calendar year is mine our favorite genre so of course we got to do it so we did something new this year where we did a like a christmas movie or a christmas adjacent winter themed uh, calendar for December. So we watched the first, yeah, a couple of first movies of those since we just got in in December. Uh, first one we watched is starting off strong with black Christmas. Um, nice. I can't say anything about that. That hasn't already been said. It's like, it's a classic slasher. It's got awesome sound design, creepy sound effects. Um, great characters. Margot Kidder is awesome in this. Um, yeah, just just a great, great, great Christmas themed horror movie. Um, we watched Misery, which is probably my favorite Stephen King adaptation. Nice. Um, nice. Kathy, Kathy Bates is just terrifying in a good, like in a good way. Um, and then yeah, and then the, this is one that was kind of a stretch, but uh, we watched the, ne- the Never Ending Story, which the Never Ending Story. story. Hey, Stranger Things. Um. Yeah, it's it's not a Christmas movie. It's not really even very wintry, but I just have like like nostalgic like memories of watching this movie around Christmas time. We had it, it was like like something we taped off the TV on on a VHS or something. I for some reason associate this around this time of year, so we watched that too. So all all classics, so much better. I will probably go try to watch something along those lines after this to cleanse my palate forever. Nice. But what, what about you? What have you been watching? I actually watched <laughs> Black Christmas. Hey. And I do have something to say about it. I love oh, that good. movie, but I think this was my wife's first time watching it. And oh, okay. I, I don't know if she got upset or she enjoyed the ending where it's kind of obscure of what happened. Because you don't really know who the killer is, right? Yeah. It's kind of left ambiguous, but you, you get the impression like I mean, I, I love from a cine, like cinematography point of view, the end of this movie is awesome where you yes. get that kind of like it just st- the camera stays on. I forget her name, the, the British girl who's the main character. They, Juliet. Like, she's Juliet from Juliet. Yeah. And Juliet. I can't, I can't yeah. think of her name either. Exactly. They, like she's had a traumatic experience. She's just like just survived killing her boyfriend who we all are supposed to are supposed to think she, he's the killer. The cops like lay her down in bed to get some rest. They leave. They won't go walk outside. And like, but the camera like stays on her while you hear the cops walk out the front door. You hear the door close and it just like sticks on her the whole time. And then it pans around the upstairs and then you hear the phone start to ring again because this whole thing has been about getting creepy calls from someone in the house and the phone rings again. And it, it like you f- the credits roll as the phone was ringing over the a shot of the house from the outside. It's awesome. John Saxon had to move out to California to stop Freddy Krueger. Uh, <laughs> I, so yeah, of time. Black Christmas. I watched Slugs, which is a 1980 Italian American movie where they have like American actors acting against Italian actors, and it's overdubbed and it's amazing. The effects slugs. are amazing. It's absurd because it is literally about killer slugs. But the film is it was just a really good time um quality creature a, feature yeah arrow video i also watched a vinegar syndrome movie called savage island where they put criminals onto an island and then the criminals are essentially like pack their gangs right and mm-hmm. one gang controls more supplies than the other and then they have to get those supplies it's it was all right it was kind of on the nose uh but there was a young magnum pi in this movie and it was it was kind Ooh. of interesting i've never seen him that young it, because this was even before magnum pi uh is this is like his first film role you think yeah i think one of his like very early ones he, eh, the movie was okay it's definitely it, not a need for sure not, to, not like to, a must for, watch yeah was it like a was it a mad max kind of like ripoff uh no nah, not really because like the 
in the beginning, like the movie opens up with like this woman, they're like, okay, like you killed your husband. We're putting you on this island. We have legally declared you dead. So whatever happens to you on this island, we don't care. Essentially, we don't give a shit about. Uh, and I thought there was going to be kind of like a televised angle of it because when they were sh- choosing the people that were going to go on this island, mm-hmm. it, it kind of looked like it was in a move, like a movie producer set because they were looking at literal headshots of criminals and like, oh, like we put this doctor guy there and we pair him up with this person. And we pair him up with that person. <laughs> and I was like, OK, maybe this is kind of like a running man type situation, but they never touch upon that again. Uh, it's not like a production where like they're intentionally putting these guys out there to get some kind of like make money off it or anything. It's yeah. Just, they're just doing it for fun, I guess. They're just kind of doing it. Well, yeah. That was crazy. Italians. And um, but that's it. I think that's, those are the biggest movies that I've that I can remember that I watched this week. OK. Yeah. So I think, yeah, we've got I mean, I think both of us, you know, we Christmas time, I think, is probably a big another big movie time. Did you watch you watch Die Hard, right? Already? I did watch Die that? Hard. Okay. I did watch Die Hard. Did I talk about 8-Bit Christmas? Did I bring that up? It's essentially uh, the new... I don't think so. Uh, a Christmas story. Kid wants a Nintendo. Parents mm-hmm. don't want him to have Nintendo. It's set in the 80s. Nintendo rots her brain. Uh, thus ensues the adventure to try to get one. My kid loved it, which is great. <laughs> I thought it was okay. My Jackie thought it was really good. Um, apparently I'm really? stupid because it has like an 86% on fucking Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Am I the idiot? No, it's the children who are wrong. Uh, I think the movie is very emotional. It's emotionally manipulative at the end. And I don't uh, think it earns the tears that it might try to elicit from the washer. It does. It, yeah, it turns on the sad music. And, yeah. Yeah. Neil Patrick Harris starts acting. I didn't get him on Nintendo, Papa. Yeah, exactly. Um, but if you got like time to kill, maybe if you're in the Christmas spirit, it's something to watch. Yeah. So yeah, I think we at least as as bad as that might have been, as as meh as that might have been, I'm sure it was a much better than the last American Virgin, and B, it at least put you in, in the Christmas spirit a little yes. bit. So it's a that, fucking masterpiece compared to last American <laughs> Virgin. It is ultra citizen Kane. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, awesome. what was the uh, what was the quote of the week? Was there a quote of the week? So Does the quote of the week have to do with the abortion. Why was the quote of the week about abortion, <laughs> Greg? How could you, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. I, I did pick a quote of the week for this movie. I am almost loath to share it with everyone because I hate this movie that much. I almost don't want to get one. But this was this was the one chuckle that this movie got out of me before I realized was going to happen um it was geez i think it was around the time when rick was trying to get gary to give him the key to his grandma's house so he could take care in there and they were giving excuses like why they couldn't help rick out and big earl or whatever his name was said something like or he like rick asked like well what about the key to your your parents uh vacation house and he says no man that's off that's been off limits since big earl smoked angel dust and ate my mom's parakeet (laughs) <laughs> what the fuck? I don't even remember that. Go. It's around like the hour mark. I've got the time code. I'll send it to you. Um, I was so shocked by how this movie was going to end that I, I didn't go and get a recording of it yet. So I could do that for you. But it, it was like the only like it was such a weird. It was such a weird line, but it also kind of like that callback to like hard drugs that was already bonkers in the beginning of the movie. It just Angel got a dust. chuckle out of me. He said specifically angel dust smoke angel dust and ate my mom's parakeet it's just such a weird crazy line and like it, it almost made me think that the movie was self-aware to realize like that's like not it, it's like a crazy college crazy high school party thing that's almost so crazy that it's like the movie winking at you so but that's weird it's also known as pcp it's a hallucinogenic drug pcp used for its mind-altering effects and hunger for parakeets, apparently. The PCP may cause hallucinations, distorted perceptions of sounds, <laughs> and violent behavior. So he he thought the parakeet like looked like a hot pocket or something. <laughs> and, just, <laughs> and just took a big bite out of it. It's a recreational drug. It can be smoked. Uh, it can be taken orally, snorted, or injected. Wow, this this drug does it all. You can also mix it with wow. cannabis or tobacco. 
Damn, man. Let's get some PCP. Okay. So adverse effects may include seizures, coma, addiction, eh. and increased mm. res- risk of suicide. <laughs> I mean, that seems to me, Phil, like it'd be worth it, right? I, yeah. You know I mean, that's, that's not going to happen to us. That's I, like the old, the point was 0.0001% of Angel Dust users. Let's see here. Surely. As of 2017 in the United States, about 1% of people in grade 12 reported using PCP what? in the prior year, while 2.9% of those over the age of 25 reported using it what? at some point in their life. What? <laughs> what? what the fuck? Are, is the rest of the world using drugs and we're the weirdos? <laughs> it almost Dude, again, sounds it's only, that way. It's, it's only 2%, but... Two percent of the like, I assume was it just the like the United States they they polled? Yeah, I mean that's a lot of people. That's like three million. I don't know. I, I don't know math. What that's that's some shockingly huge number of people in this country yeah. who have done PCP at one point in their lives. It's a class two drug, which I don't really understand. Well, I don't know. It's a class two drug. So it's like let's like black tar heroin at the top, or like like fentanyl, fentanyl is yeah. in there. Which that's scary. Fentanyl scares me. Yeah, what they're, they're th- like a grain, like a like a rice grain of it can kill yeah. you if you like accidentally inhale a sand, like yeah, something super tiny. You just yep, you're dead. There's nothing they can do. Like, Weird. The, like the, like the the overdose amount is hilariously terrifyingly small. The number of deaths in involving fentanyl in 2017 in the United States was twenty nine thousand four hundred and six. The year before that, it was nineteen thousand. It went up ten thousand in a year. Was that That's insane? Was that was that the coat? Was that twenty twenty COVID year? Uh twenty seventeen. So oh, sorry, twenty. Okay, so yeah. Jeez, I I I, ter- I'm, I don't want to know how much it went up when people were forced to stay inside th- for That's a whole insane. year. That's insane. <sighs> That's what killed. Uh, um. Oh God, why can't I think of his name? Tom Petty was fentanyl. Oh, that's depressing to hear. Yeah, oh, man. I, man, that shit kills a lot of people. So the moral of this podcast episode is don't do drugs because <laughs> you'll go get super high and eat your mom's parakeet. We could we could do an entire probably month's worth of podcasts of us reading about drugs and just being flabbergasted <laughs> and just being shocked at a bunch a bunch of uh, nerds. <laughs> Googling about drugs and how terrifying they are. Do you know how many, how many people die from oxycodone? Oh <laughs> like my they just god! Give shit over the counter. <laughs> um. uh, well, rip that mom's parakeet and yeah. rotten hell, West American virgin. I thought you were about to say Tom Petty. <laughs> it's going to be <laughs> rip Tom fucking Petty. Breaks. <laughs> I love Tom Petty. Oh, I love Tom Petty. Yeah. I'll play. I'll play some of the. I'll play play that U two song while we're talking about people dying, <laughs> dying from drug overdoses. Fentanyl. Oh my gosh! And then we'll get sued. <laughs> we'll get sued. Bono will be like, "Oh, you can't do that. You can't hey, do he's that." British. Mate. I know that's that's more like uh, that's more uh, the the Beatles. Oh, uh, you, 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 <laughs> you can't, can't play that, that song. We're talking about Lennon. fentanyl. John, yeah, John. <laughs> I mean, John Lennon probably did a bunch of drugs. Apparently not. Yeah, not fentanyl, probably. No, no. Maybe. But what if the guy who killed uh, John Lennon did PCP? Oh, and he thought John Lennon was just like, uh, like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man Stop or something. He's... <laughs> yeah. Bang, bang, bang. bang. <laughs> wow, this got dark. Well, if you like what you're hearing, <laughs> go ahead and like, subscribe. If for, if for some reason you have not already stopped this podcast. Uh, go ahead and you can send us a, an email at that's canon at gmail.com you can follow us on youtube you, you, youtube <laughs> youtube <laughs> youtube that's the russian version of youtube youtube dot are you i am not liable if you go there i have no <laughs> fucking clue what's at that website just don't um there's probably someone's domain squatting there uh, you can follow us at <laughs> youtube.com uh and we're also on TikTok and Instagram. We're everywhere where great media can be consumed. Mm. Consume, consume, consume. Obey. Uh, <laughs> obey. John Carpenter. Uh, and remember, since we said it, that's canon. <laughs>